Hi everybody, I'm Sue Allen Clayton. Welcome to my channel where we'll be learning the tarot deck one card at a time. In today's video, we'll be talking about the 40 cards in the middle of the tarot deck, the aces through tens. These are the first 40 cards in the minor arcana, which represents the day-to-day -day events in our lives. Rounding up the minor arcana are the court cards, the pages, knights, queens, and kings, which are the subject of another video called Meet the Court Cards, which I've linked to below. The aces through tens come after the first part of the deck, which is the major arcana. These 22 cards, sometimes called the Fool's Journey, represent the major lessons in our lives, and you can see the images here. I have a video called Meet the Major Arcana, which I've linked to below. So let's get started. I feel like the aces through tens are the most recognizable parts of the tarot deck because they are very similar to playing cards. Like traditional playing cards, each suit has an ace and the numbers 2 through 10. Like traditional playing cards, the aces through tens have four suits. These are wands, swords, cups, and pentacles, which means coins. I have a whole video on what the suits mean, so please check it out in Meet the Suits. I'm going to give you a very brief description because it will help you understand the difference between the cards in each suit. Unlike playing cards where you don't really pay much attention to the suit's meanings, the suits in the tarot deck play a critical role. Each suit is also connected to an element. It is the connection to each element which determines the difference between, say, the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Wands. When I talk about each element, I'm going to show an image in each of the suits. These include the Ace through Tens, as well as the Court cards, which are the Page, Knight, King, and Queen. The Court cards are the subject of another video. Wands is connected to the element of Fire. These represent people who are feisty, confident, enthusiastic, adventurous, extroverted, passionate, flashy, and high energy. I'm going through these quickly, so please pause if you want to spend more time looking at the images. Swords are connected to the element of air. Swords are all about communicating and expressing ourselves. This includes our thoughts about ourselves, as well as our thoughts about the world around us. This encompasses intelligence, knowledge, truth, mental clarity, and our sense of right and wrong. Cups are connected to the element of water. This card is all about emotions. Cups people are gentle, loving, sensitive, nurturing, and feel things deeply. Pentacles are connected to the element of earth. It's all about things in the material world, such as our bodies, homes, nature, or how we earn our living. I'll talk about how the suits connect in the first set of cards, the aces. So let's get started. Aces are about new beginnings and the potential that exists when you start something new. It might be starting a new business or a new relationship or your first day of college. It does not mean that the beginning will lead to success. It's a great start, but this new beginning will require a lot of work to reach their full potential, which happens once we reach the tens. So let's talk about how this relates to the suits. A tarot reading generally starts with a question. Let's say I ask the question, what should I do to make my new business a success? I've pulled an ace. Let's see how I would determine each card differently. Let's look at the ace of wands. Wands is connected to the element of fire. It's all about being feisty, confident, enthusiastic, adventurous, extroverted, passionate, flashy, and high energy. So the answer to my question is that, to be successful in my business, I need to be feisty, confident, enthusiastic, adventurous, extroverted, passionate, flashy, and high energy. I am an introvert, so this would be very hard for me. But it's great information and definitely something to work on. Let's say I ask the question, what should I do to make my new business a success? And I pull the Ace of Cups. Cups are connected to the element of water. This card is all about emotions. Cups people are gentle, loving, sensitive, nurturing, and feel things deeply. So how do I interpret this? 
To be successful, I need to be gentle, loving, sensitive, and nurturing. I need to keep in touch with my feelings. Rather than charging forward like in the Ace of Wands, I need to take a gentle approach and stay in touch with my feelings. This, for me, is a whole lot more comfortable. Okay, back to the question. What should I do to make my new business a success? I've pulled the Ace of Swords. Swords is connected to the element of air. Swords is all about communicating and expressing ourselves. This includes our thoughts about ourselves as well as our thoughts about the world around us. This encompasses intelligence, knowledge, truth, mental clarity, and our sense of right and wrong. So to make my business a success, I need to have a lot of mental clarity about what I'm doing. I need to beef up my knowledge and make sure that I am mindful of right and wrong. I also need to do a good job communicating what my business is about. Have you ever watched Shark Tank where business owners pitch to the sharks and try to get an investment? Good pitches are all about clarity and good communication, so this is good advice. Let's look at the final ace and how it would answer the question, what should I do to make my new business a success? Now I've pulled the ace of pentacles. Pentacles are connected to the element of earth. When you think of the earth, it is very stable. It's not like air or fire that moves quickly or is kind of flashy. It's not about water that represents emotion. It's about things that stay pretty constant, like the metal that the coins are made of. So I take this card to mean that, to be successful in my new venture, I need to put my nose to the grindstone, work hard, and not get distracted by emotions or all that flashy stuff that is going on around me. I've run my own business for more than 30 years, and I am guilty of this. There's always a new software program, approach, guru, course, or something to keep me distracted. Keeping my nose to the grindstone is good advice for success. I'm not going to do this analysis for the other cards, but I think you can figure out how it works. Next up is the twos. Look at each card and listen to what the card means. Now that you know what each suit means, apply that information to each card. So let's get started. The twos are about nurturing the potential of the aces to create balance, choose between two options, or create a partnership. The partnerships might be related to love, but it might also be a business partnership or even a partnership with spirit. It's about balancing out a new relationship or decision that you need to make. Once again, we are at the beginning of the numbered sequence, and there is a long way to go for things to work out before we reach number 10. Three is a number about reaching the first stage of completion. Three is kind of a magical number in tarot. It's based on Christianity when we think about God having three parts, which is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When you have your first child, you move from being a couple of two to actually being a family of three. The different suits definitely show how difficult it is to embark on this journey of completion. We see joy in the Three of Cups and suffering in the Three of Swords. We will also see two more sets of threes in this sequence, four through six and seven through nine. Fours represent that you are growing by moving forward the creation of a solid foundation, and a sense of stability. It can be a great place to rest and recover after moving through the first three cards. Think about a table with four legs. It is very stable. In this card, we regain a sense of stability after the celebration or pain of the previous card. We also have six more cards to go before we reach number 10, so it's not really time to get stuck. We need to collect our energy and move forward. So fives. After the stability of the fours, we are back to an unstable place. Life can't be calm and stable forever, right? It's like you're sitting at your kitchen table, drinking your morning coffee, enjoying the peace and quiet and thinking, I could get used to this. Well, no. This card is about conflict, tension, challenges, uncertainty, and loss. Our comfort zone has been disrupted and we are re-energized. Change is occurring. The sixes represent the end to the second group of three. So we're at a stage of harmony, healing, and completion. 
were riding on the energy created during the conflict in the fives and are now at a place of expansion, growth, and forward movement. Look at the six of wands. In the five of wands, people were fighting with no real pattern. Now the fighters are lined up in an orderly fashion and watching a parade. We're back to harmony. So we've reached the sevens. If you've been paying attention, we've completed two cycles of threes. Now we have some level of a new beginning. This card is all about making tough choices and dealing with challenges. Unlike in previous cards, you're not relying on the help of other people. It's all up to you. You make the choices and deal with the consequences. With the number eights, this card is about achievement, growth, and continuing to make progress. We are now nearing the end, but are not quite there. It's time to persevere, as there are still some challenges to overcome. You still have things to learn and overcome and move forward toward your highest good. So we've reached the nines. This is the end of the third cycle of three. It is the culmination of your experience. This card is about completion, endings, and inner strength. Depending on the suit, you can be enjoying material comforts, such as pentacles, or having a pretty rough time of it, as in the Nine of Swords. One of the many things I love about tarot is that it describes what life is really like. We have seasons in life that are about celebrating, which is shown in the Nine of Cups, or complete despair, like in the Nine of Swords. The thing to remember is that life is a cycle. For better or worse, you've reached the end of another one. The tens are kind of like an epilogue after completing the previous three cycles of three. It's about concluding your experience. It's an opportunity to reflect on your journey and get ready for the next stage in your life. I think of this like it's New Year's Eve and you're doing a review of your previous year. Some parts will be good, some will suck, but it's over and we start again on January 1st. So that's it with the Aces through Tens. I hope it helps you understand what these cards mean. And please join me in the next video, Meet the Court Cards.